Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. What is going on, brothers and sisters? It's Daniel here, and we are back here again today. Alhamdulillah. Today we have quite an interesting video that I saw pop up on my YouTube, and it is by the channel Quran and Islam, and it is titled, Will Our Generation See Imam Al Mahdi? Al Mahdi, right? That's how you say it, right? And, um, you know, if you ask me, of course, this uh, Imam Mahdi will not come until the end times. And we don't know. Only Allah knows when the end times uh, will occur. But, you know, there's kind of a discussion that can be had about this, you know, whether or not we think maybe it's coming close. And it's. I think this kind of ties into the field of eschatology, which I've touched on in a few videos here on the channel. And I find it interesting. I think some of you all find it interesting as well. So today we're going to learn a little bit more about this, inshallah. I believe this video has some clips from some famous uh, Muslim speakers, like, for example, Dr. Israr Ahmed, who I always enjoy listening to. So it looks like a pretty interesting video. So let's check it out, inshallah. And I invite you, please, please watch it with me. So let's check it out. Mm. Pakistan. Putin embodies war. We all know that he is the sole reason why various wars and conflicts persist and why all attempts to restore peace have failed and he will not change. Putin. Unprovoked and blatant breach of Pakistan's sovereignty by Iran is a violation of international law. This illegal act is completely unacceptable and has no justification whatsoever. There have always been wars, but the beginning of 2024 has kept the world on the edge. That's true. Feels like it's about to the most pop off. Of all were the floods in Libya that killed over 4,000 people and left many thousands missing. Mediterranean storm Daniel swept through eastern Libya. That's my name. Leaving a trail of devastation marked by intense rainfall and widespread flooding. After watching this video, you may find it difficult to imagine an ideal future because the world is now on the verge of complete destruction. Brothers and sisters, the time has come to start preparing for the ultimate and most deadly war, World War III. The most awaited war. According to all religious and scientific predictions, every nation in the world will fight with each other in this war. It doesn't seem impossible now. Or very well, I don't think it'll be like a free for all. I, I mean, at least I don't think so. That seems like uh, that'd be really chaotic if every nation was fighting every other nation. But maybe that will happen. But I think I would, I would assume, just like every previous world war, there's kind of like. Uh, alliances that form. Uh, said by famous businessman and author Robert Kiyosaki. We're going to war right now. Okay. Can't you see it? Taiwan, Ukraine. The world war has begun. Some believe that the nuclear war is destined to take place in this century and time. Armed with the most lethal weapons ever created, robots and AI technology, with no shortage of humans since the inhabitants of the earth have grown all high. With each passing day, this future is getting closer. But we are not talking about just a nuclear war, but the end of times. It is sooner than we think. Natural disasters are transforming the world one after the other. Okay. Well, a crazy world we live in, eh? Earthquakes, tsunamis, volcano eruptions, and the rising heat and climate change in the world is not just a normal sign. In the midst of all these disasters, nations are at war with one another. Nuclear weapons are more accessible than ever. Constantly, there is a threat of warfare looming over us. Brothers and sisters, 
It is one of the evil tendencies of human beings. They want to cause insane destruction, war after war. All this will cause masses of people to suffer more in the world. The injustice, crime rate and starvation is getting even higher. It will all start with a conflict between Muslims and Jews. You might think that the conflict between two nations is solely between themselves. In actuality, it goes far beyond the borders. Countries with great power and abilities to influence this war are involved. So, who do you think will win in the end? The answer is clear. It's right in front of us. It's God every will turn. Win. The powerful nations <laughs> have firmly stood in support of the settlers, the Jews. So it is apparent that they will win in the end. For now, brothers and sisters, win what? it all seems so possible for them. They have conquered this holy land. It will be called their land. They will now want all Jews to come and settle here forever. The settlers will go about in the world. Yeah, doesn't it say this in the Quran, something along the lines of like, Jews will uh, be successful and they'll get power. They'll get really powerful uh, for some time, but then they'll be punished because they they will they will use that power and success wrongly. Find every Jew in the world and make them gathered here on this land. It's their mission. This is what the Jews have wanted since the beginning forming the largest army of Jews on earth, conquering the Holy Land, Al-Aqsa, and finally building the Third Temple, to dominate and control the world so that they can all call for their Messiah, Antichrist, Dajjal. But this is not all they want. The settlers will not just stop here. They will continue to expand their influence and power to establish Jewish dominance over nations and territories. It will go on until Jews ensure that all the nations submit to their authority and follow their beliefs. Most important of all, Sounds they right. want to ensure that all sacred areas belong to them. The settlers and these Jews. You know, I don't think I don't think this is all Jews either. I don't think all Jews think like this. It's definitely. It's not even this. I think it's just true. Like there's there's Jews that are non-Zionists. Most of you are, are aware of this. In control of those regions where they think their journeys began. And why is that? It is to form a greater Israel. But how do we know that this theory is all true? According to these words of Dr. Israr, all his predictions have so far come to be absolutely true. Greater Israel ka qiyam. Jis mein Misr ka sara zarkhez ilaqa shamil hoga. जो डेल्टा का इलाका कहलाता है इसका जहां के उस वक्त के बादशाह ने हजरत यूसुफ अलैहिस्सलाम के जमाने के बादशाह ने वो फिरायना के खानदान में से नहीं था वो अरब था अरबों ही से किसी वक्त कोई कौम आई थी जो कभी सिर्फ काबिज हो गई थी उसने हजरत यूसुफ के खानदान को लाके वहां आबाद किया बेहतरीन जश्न का इलाका कहलाता है बेहतरीन वो कहते हैं हमारा है हम रहे वहां पर कई सौ बरस तक रहे इराक हमारा है वहां हमें कैद में रखा गया नजर दे गया था अरब का शिमाली हिस्सा जो हमारा है वहां खैबर में यहूदी गढ़े कले थे और वहां मदीने के अंदर जो है तीन कबीले यहूदी थे जिन्हें मोहम्मद ने सल्लाह वहां से निकाल पार किया था ये जॉर्डन वॉर्डन ये तुर्की का भी कुछ हिस्सा हमारा है बाकी पूरा लेबनान और पूरा फिलिस्तीन ये सब इसके ऊपर बनेगा एक ग्रेटर इसराइल दिस इज देर लोक कर और इसके लिए जरूरी है एक बहुत बड़ी जंग ऐसे आसानी से नहीं हो जाएगा आर्मगेडॉन जिसको हुजूर ने फरमाया अलमलहमतुलजमा अलमलहमतुलकुबरा द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ग्रेटर इसराइल इट विल इंक्लूड द ऑल द फर्टाइल लैंड एंड एरिया ऑफ इजिप्ट आल्सो कॉल्ड एज डेल्टा एरिया it is the place where the king at the time of prophet used and israel ahmed is so fascinating and I, i wish there was more of his work like that like translated into english because he's just fascinating he just he makes all these uh he he has some uh these predictions that i wish i kind of i wish i could sit down and talk to him like how is he coming to these 
He's like connecting dots. He's like a dot connector. He's like, yeah, it's pretty fascinating. Of Ali Salam made his family settle there. The king belonged to the nation of Arabs. It was found that some group of Arabs came in this land. So this king also made Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam and his family settled here in this land of Egypt. And this land of Egypt was the best among all the land. Beautiful and a magnificent land. The Protestant Jews claims that this land was theirs. They say it's ours. It belongs to us. We have lived there for many centuries. We have right to this land. At other place, we lived as prisoners. The southern part of Saudi Arab is also ours. In the region of Habar in Medina, lived some Jews. There were three groups of Jews in this land. The Messenger of Allah made them evacuated from Medina. Including Jordan and some parts of Turkey is also claimed by the Jews. The remaining entire states of Lebanon and Palestine will be built upon the land of Greater Israel. And for all this to happen, a huge war is necessary to make it all possible. This mm. all will happen not easily. Armageddon, as said by Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, Al Malhamat al Uzma, Al Malhamat al Qubra, meaning a huge, great war. Ye dur nahi hai. Is liye ke is par mutafik hai. Yehudi bhi. That's crazy to think. Protestants that actually happens. Puri tarah mutafik. Armageddon, jisse ab third world war keh le, Al Malhamat al Uzma keh le. It is not very far because all these people have agreed upon this. All the Jews and the Protestant Christians are together in this agenda. Armageddon, which you can call the Third World War or Al Malhamatul Uzma or Al Malhamatul Qubra in the words of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it will come soon. From this war will emerge. Greater Israel. And now, it is not hidden anymore. This is all being publicly carried out. The Jews are openly announcing this. They are preparing everyone in the world for this future. Listen to this statement of the politician and author of the settler state, Avi Lipkin. Eventually, our borders will extend from Lebanon, the Great Desert, which is Saudi Arabia, and then from the Mediterranean to the Euphrates. And who's on the other side of the Euphrates? The Kurds. And the Kurds are our friends. So we have the Mediterranean behind us, the Kurds in front of us, Lebanon, which really needs the umbrella of protection of Israel. And then we're going to take, I believe, we're going to take uh, Mecca, Medina, and Mount Sinai and well, pu purify those places. Brothers and sisters, purify them. Look at how they are sending their message around the world. What does that mean? What does the future hold for us? All these events are leading us to the arrival of Imam Mahdi. How can we be sure of that? Brothers and sisters, it is because all the situation and signs mentioned in the hadith before the coming of Imam Mahdi has appeared in front of our very own eyes. This current state of the world, which is deeply going into the dark, is giving us a warning sign. That is, the end of times is getting closer. According to various Islamic texts, Imam Mahdi will emerge right when the world falls deeply into darkness. The name Mahdi means the one who guides. So he will be the one to guide humanity from this darkness. Every day, predictions about the time before Imam Mahdi's arrival are becoming true. The Euphrates River, which sustains human life, has been drying off. Saudi Arabia's hottest deserts and mountains are already turning green. Mm -hmm. The huge deserts have now running rivers. Recently, NASA has just confirmed the phenomenon of the Rosette Nebula. This is a phenomenon that is also mentioned in the Quran when the oh, sky wow. turns red. They are all signs of the coming of Imam Mahdi. Do you still truly believe this is just a coincidence? But the question is, are we really going to be the ones who will witness the appearance of Imam Mahdi? It is very possible that our generations will live to witness Imam Mahdi. The chances are also that the Resurrection Day or Judgment Day might happen in this very century. Either this or we could be among the very few Muslims that will be left on earth when the end of times happens. So, how can we protect ourselves from this fitna? 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, our guide and teacher, supplicated to Allah for protection against the Jal in every salah prayer. After the tashahud, proclaiming the oneness of Allah, and before the taslim, the concluding act in prayer, where one says, Assalamu alaikum. We can memorize this dua and can make it a part of our prayers too. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam used to teach them this supplication. O oh Allah, we seek refuge with you from the torment of hell, and I seek refuge with you from the torment of the grave, and I seek refuge with you from the trial of the Dajjal, the false messiah, and I seek refuge with you from the trial of life and death. Oh, that's it. It just ended abruptly there. Yeah, I remember learning this dua like really early when I started learning how to pray. Okay, that was quite an interesting video. Quite interesting. World War Three. It means Imam Mahdi is coming. Allahu Alam. I think we, we don't know for sure. But it sure would kind of make sense. You know, it sure would kind of make sense when you look at the Quran. You know, and like they talk about the 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 the, the sky turning red. I didn't know that NASA just confirmed some Rosette Nebula. I did not know that. So that was something I learned new from this video. And, uh, you know, the, this kind of greater Israel thing, I've actually not heard too much about that before. And that kind of helps me understand what helps me put this Palestine conflict into context. I've heard people talk about it. Like, what do they say? From the river to the sea? Um, but I honestly don't really know what that means. But I guess that's referring to greater Israel. The Red Sea and to the, to the, to the Nile River. I don't know. Anyways, quite interesting video. It's kind of, kind of scary, honestly. Imagine if it like that actually happens. Imagine like this all just goes crazy. And then, and like as a Muslim, the Muslim men should go fight. You know what I mean? Are we ready for that? <laughs> Probably not. Mm. Yeah, who knows? Like I said, Allahu Alam. But it could really turn up in the next, say, what? 10, 20 years. It could really go sideways. It could definitely get interesting. So we'll have to see. May Allah, may Allah guide us and give us strength and um, make us of those that are successful. And inshallah, you, you all enjoyed that video and that was beneficial for you. And inshallah, we will see you all in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.